Sun Tzu once said, the supreme art of war is to subdue the enemy without fighting. Keep this in mind as we discuss today the outcome of the Kazakhstan turmoil and what does it mean for the geopolitical and economic stability of Central Asia. My name is Dr. David Waralu. And my name is Dr. Ross Stewart. And you are watching Geopolitics in Conflict. You know, I understand completely what's going on in this country. What's going on, Rod? The natural gas price went up. Indeed. And it caused, it caused <laughs> hundreds of people, thousands of people, to be hostile, armed, deadly in the street. Well, it looks like it's more than just about liquefied natural gas price hike. <clears throat> I mean, events took far beyond what anybody anticipated. I remember we did the, the live stream about that. <clears throat> Excuse me. We talked about it, we, but at that time, from last Friday to today, when we are recording this video, things have evolved beyond anybody's anticipation. You know, it becomes now a geopolitical nightmare. Oh boy! Because nobody, I, I'll admit it, I didn't see that coming. You know, I had a chance to stop at Kazakhstan a couple of years ago on my way to Afghanistan, and. You know, it's it's a small country. It's a landlock, you know, about 19 million. Yeah. You know, it's not a rich country, but you won't believe the amount of natural resources they have. As a matter of fact, uh, there was some study that I found uh, when I was go doing my research for my Russian book. I found out that, that Kazakhstan, the oil reserves are far greater than those in the Middle East. That is astonishing. That means that they're, they're potentially a very wealthy country, even though the terrain is remarkably rugged. Well, indeed, that is one of the reasons why they cannot get to it. But here is the thing about uh, Kazakhstan, just for you to know. Uh, so you, you put this within perspective, and not only from geopolitical aspect, but also from an economic. Uh, why is that important? Why all of a sudden, there is this a global interest is what's going on in Kazakhstan. Well, first of all, we start with geography. Its biggest neighbors are Russia, Russia and, and China. China. So Kazakhstan is sandwiched between Russia and China. So some will argue that, well, we can see now why there's a turmoil there and who's behind it. Well, maybe you can ask this question and it will help us determine that. Isn't the timing of this a coincidence when the big talks between Russia and the United States are going on, uh, and all of a sudden this breaks out to split Russia's uh, attention into two locations. Well, you're absolutely correct about that, Russ, because here's the thing. Uh, and I had a chance to, I was invited by uh, Sputnik in Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. to address this issue in one of the interviews. And, and, and absolutely, and my argument uh, is that, you know, this, cons this issue with uh, Kazakhstan, it has both geopolitical and economic impacts. How so, you may ask? Well, to Russia, it is a geopolitical issue. To China, it is an economic one. Right. I mean, geopolitical to a degree for China, given what's going on uh, uh, on the border with because here is the concern to China. It has to do with Xinjiang, what has been taking place. We all know about the lies that's been taking place and so forth. And look how close it is. Exactly. But for China, it has to do with BRI, the Belt and Road Initiative. Why is that? It's because Kazakhstan is that center in Central Asia. And China's BRI goes right through goes it. right through it. So you can just see why to China it would be concerned. As a matter of fact, China just offered to assist Kazakhstan based on Kazakhstan's request. Kazakhstan, Kazakh's president reached out to China and said, hey, we need your assistance. China said, sure, whatever you need within our own capabilities. You know, that's really perfectly consistent with China not saying we're going to send troops. 
Historically, that's not what they've done. And even today, that's not what they're doing. And they didn't commit troops to this, although Russia did. You're absolutely correct. What Russia did because of the uh, security organization that is, exists between uh, uh, Russia, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, and Kyrgyzstan, they formed uh, some sort of a security alliance organization right. in case. But guess what? Russia right away, last week, when, when uh, the protesters start to you know, be very destructive and so forth, and there were some individuals who died, and so it started to become a concern because now you are destabilizing the country. So what Russia ended up doing with the uh, 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 consultation with the other countries, members sent a battalion to other countries, I think Uzbekistan and Kyrgyzstan, they sent their own troops as well, and they managed to secure the main infrastructure inside Kazakhstan. So that is very, very important. But there is that geopolitical implication to all that. And why is that Russia is concerned? As you mentioned earlier, because Russia cannot have two fronts. Ukraine, which we all know what's going on right now yeah. with the talks between uh, NATO and Russia. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, on January 11th, uh, U.S. and Russia held uh, uh, talks in Geneva. On January 12th, NATO and Russia held uh, uh, talks. And on January 13th, the OSCE, which stands for Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, will be held, uh, uh, holding talks with, with uh, Russia on January 13th. So all this because of the concerns regarding Ukraine, but at the same time, there are turmoil was going on in, in, in Kazakhstan. And that's why Russia was very concerned. You know, one of the things to consider with this is how well organized this seems to be. It wasn't like a bunch of people just ran out in the street because the prices went up. It's like in a number of cities, very organized demonstrations all appeared at the same time. Well, and you have to wonder what's behind that. You're absolutely correct, Ross. That is a, an interesting observation because uh, there are some conversation among some analysts uh, that, you know, uh, they are not going to rule out the possibility of a failed coup. <clears throat> so, and if I am to use history as my guide, as I always do, I'll go to two main events where we saw similar tactics, similar demonstrations, similar, uh, uh, it's like a playbook. Right. Ukraine before 2014. Yep. And Venezuela following the death of Hugo Chavez. That was the exact scenario. Of course, we saw what took place in Hong Kong. We saw what took place in Taiwan. And isn't that interesting that now you don't hear much about Taiwan anymore? <laughs> you know, I find it very ironic. And, 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 and Thailand also. Yeah. So all this an indication of, are there any hands behind these demonstrations? We let you reach that conclusion yourself. So. Well, the conclusion that both Russia and China came to was, the United States is behind it. That's, that's And they said it out loud publicly. You say, we think that this is the troublemakers are in the United <laughs> States in Washington, D.C. Yeah. Well, because if you take a step back and ask yourself, who's going to benefit from the turmoil like that? We all, we all know. So, and all this is a reflection of what that geopolitical shift that's taking place not only in, in Asia, uh, Southeast Asia, but also now in Central Asia. And because there is one thing just for you to know, there is one thing that both Russia and China have in common is to ensure stability in Central Asia. They do not want to have U.S. presence there. And the United States, from what we can tell, is really looking to stop the progress of China and cause turmoil in Russia. Yeah. But we all know, Ross, it's a reality. They can't. The U.S. cannot do it. It won't be able to. As a matter of fact, there are now talks about these trade talks between the uh, 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 United States and China, but it's not going to amount to anything. Because China, you know, to them it's like, why bother? You know, we're going to be moving forward with whatever we do. So, uh, and for us in the U.S., we are more divided than ever. Right. So, when you start realizing that we lack credibility, we cannot, we don't have a vision, we don't have a strategy in our foreign policy, how do we expect to sort of deal with global issues? 
and this is one of them. Well, and I think another consideration here is that the activities of the United States government are, they're being busted for it. They're being held accountable. People are seeing it, and for, for thanks to the internet and other things, yeah. but perhaps the very first time. This is what's really going on. Exactly, and, and that's usually, I'll, I'll say it straightforward because I don't sugarcoat things, that becomes the indication of the, uh, getting the beginning of the end uh, for the Western hegemony altogether. I mean, I looked at it today when I uh, uh, read the summary of the talks between uh, U.S. and Russia, and, and it's just how the United States did not respond to Russia's concerns or didn't address the, the, the main talking points. And the main talking points, at least if I can summarize it for you in three points, are the first one is the removal of nuclear uh, tactical assets that the U.S. has in the region near Ukraine. And second one is the declaration by NATO to declare that they will not uh, admit Georgia and Ukraine into the Northern Alliance. And the third one has to do with the protection of the uh, minority Russians in Donbas and so forth. So, so you can just see uh, those dynamics and we couldn't answer Russia's request for that. And that put a big question mark about our credibility. So when you see what's taking place in, Ukraine, in uh, Kazakhstan, you start to wonder how all of a sudden a basic demonstrations that was over liquefied natural gas transfer or trend, uh, oh, sort of changed into a political call yeah. for change in the government. And that's usually uh, an indication for that. You know, one of the things we typically do is we say, first of all, geographically, where are they? Well, we know where, where it is, right in, right in bordered by China and Russia. Exactly. The second thing is how much of the international import-export goes to those two places? Well, exports is 50%, imports is 30%. Wow. And so their number one and two uh, trade partners are mm -hmm. Russia and China. Well, that explains it also why Russia and China were concerned about that. One. And by the way, just for you to know, we're going to have a map of Kazakhstan uh, uh, at the bottom of the description. We'll have a link there for you so you see the exact location that Ross was talking about. So, so yeah, 50%, that's quite a... Their whole economy is actually based, the prosperity that they do have is uh -huh. based on China and Russia. Well, you know, it's not like, like they didn't have corruption going on there. Oh my gosh, Ross, you, you, you hit the nail with that. The corruption for that, because here is why, what happened. After the disintegration of the Soviet Union in 1991, Kazakhstan got its independence in 1993. Well, since that time, we're talking about 30 years plus, right? Yeah. Or something like that. You know. Since then, they only had two presidents. <laughs> That's not and, very and, many. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> and the first one was a bad one, uh, Nusr Sultan Nazarbayev. You know, the guy basically squandered the resources of the country for his family. You know, typical of, you know. To me personally, uh, and I have nothing against the guy, I don't know him, but he should be put to trial. Yeah. Because the resources that he squandered belong to the Kazakh people. So, you know... The, the current, I mean, he resigned, but he resigned just from the office, but he was still having influence behind the scenes. To the point, Ross, just for you to know, to the point that they named the capital after him, Nusr Sultan. That's what they covered. Now they're going to change it. There is a law in the process for changing that one. The current president is, is kind of, you know, He's leaning more towards Russia's sphere, you know. And this is the whole reason why the United States took interest in Kazakhstan in the first place. Well, they took interest in Kazakhstan because of location, of course, but also because Kazakhstan used to be the main nuclear testing center oh. for, uh, for the Soviet Union. So, and they convinced Kazakhs to give up their weapons, their nuclear weapons, in return for security. And one of the things Vladimir Putin has said is we're getting out of there as soon as the things stabilize. They did indeed. As a matter of fact, uh, I just read uh, 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 yesterday an analysis about that. They, it's within 48 hours. They're going to be withdrawing from there. Wow. Yeah, I just read that one and they mentioned that one that, that that's, that's what's going to be taking place. So 
It's just uh, Russians understand uh, they don't want any destabilized area near them. So because it's a big concern for them. So China, on the other hand, doesn't want that either because both countries are moving into not only strengthening their relationship, but also they want to make sure that Central Asia stays free of U.S. presence. That is basically what the bottom line to all that one is. Do you remember the name of the organization? It's something like National, Edu National Endowment for Democracy. Yeah, Ned. Do you remember that one? Oh, yeah. Well, my understanding is that they're actually a front for a government agency. Can we name the agency? Uh, so, yeah. Okay, it's the, the CIA. It's the Central Intelligence <laughs> Agency. <laughs> and that they, really, that they really went into this country, mm -hmm. and uh, they're actually behind the organization of all of these, these demonstrations because it's too well organized. Yeah, and there was the same argument that was made in Hong Kong. Yeah. Remember when they had the demonstrations yeah. there? You know, the, the uprising that was in Taiwan about uh, uh, tensions with, with China, motherland, and so forth, you know. It's kind of, as you said earlier, Russ, it's coming to an end, you know. You know, just live and let live, you know. Right. Why are we, we Americans, why are we going in far lands, getting involved, when we have our own issues here at home? And they are staggeringly big issues. Yeah. Can you imagine allocating or investing that money right here at home in dealing with health care, for example? Homelessness, education, infrastructure. I mean, poverty, which is going up, inflation that is now going up. I mean, we got enough issues to be dealing with here. So why are we going far lands, dealing with, you know, creating whatever? So let's fix our own problem here first and let other countries live the way they want to. So... Live and let live. Uh, who are we to say that our system is the best in the world? Not me. Well, I think that's just a front anyway. This is really about money and power and control. Exactly, because if we are to say democracy, well, let's start with our own. You know, <laughs> I mean, we all know what it means. That, and this is why, guys, we have other uh, uh, locations where we can discuss issues freely because, you know, censorship is real. So we, we're not going to... Uh, hide the fact from uh, uh, reality because everybody knows about it. Well, usually you're going to ask yourself in a democracy, you're not supposed to have that. Yeah. So, and this is where, uh, so, so that is where the issue with uh, Kazakhstan, we see it going. So it would be interesting. This is going to settle probably in about two weeks or so. You probably will know because if it was a failed attempt, good, then it didn't work. But also because U.S. is very concerned about losing Kazakhstan to Russia's sphere of influence. You know, that I have to wonder, mm -hmm. are there actually elements in the government, their government, mm -hmm. that actually supported this? Well, that's an interesting point, Russ, because the first one I will think about is the intelligence service. You know, how come the intelligence service didn't give the government a heads up about what's coming? Yeah. That means either your intelligence service is incompetent or it has been paid off, and yes, exactly. That's that's usually the the, the bottom line to it. Where uh, so it's just for me personally, Ross. It surprised me because I did not see that coming. And I'll, I'll admit it. You know, you know, as I keep an eye on what's going on around the world, I just did not see that coming that way. So, and that's usually how it happens. What would you say the bottom line for our viewers is? Well, the bottom line is that uh, you should not just believe whatever you read about, oh, protests or demonstrations in Kazakhstan have to do with the liquefied natural gas prices that went up. It goes beyond that, you know. So what's in it for you? It depends, again, what part of the world you reside. So if you happen to be here in the United States watching this video here, you're going to be asking yourself, what are we doing in Kazakhstan? Why are we going and creating issues? What about taking care of our own issues here? If you are in Asia, you're going to be saying to yourself, you know, will this ever end? Because everybody wants to live in peace. If you are in Central Asia, you're going to say, we've been doing fine with no tensions. Yeah. All of a sudden, we're having this turmoil. So, yeah, that's, that's usually what it is. I mean, those countries in the region, they're going to unite themselves, on which they did, you know, by sending these troops. Yeah. It was an indication of that that organization is strong. Quickly resolve the issue. That's 
it says a lot that infiltration from outside, it's not going to work. So that is the that is the bottom line to it. So, so before we leave, we want to let you know about a few a few things about upcoming uh, events we're going to have. So for uh, Friday, we're going to have our uh, live stream, as always do. Uh, you know, just to let you know, Elizabeth is not going to be available for for some time here. She got some things to to take care of, and so we are our presence, especially when it comes down to the break-ins. Uh, it's not going to be as frequent as we used to do, but just for about a week or two. And, and also for our uh, membership, uh, for our members, we're going to be preparing for the presentation we're going to be doing soon about, uh, uh, I think, Saudi Arabia and China nuclear exchange. I believe. Whoa. So that's what's going to be. Yeah, China is helping the Saudis for that one. So, And uh, uh, so remember to check us out on... Uh, uh, geopolitics.locals.com that's another platform where we can talk freely over there and remember to check out our membership at geopoliticsinconflict.com so follow me on twitter at uh, dwaralu and also we look forward to seeing you on friday for live stream so as always stay informed till next time bye bye